Welcome back to another episode of Mean Girl Pod. Today's going to be a fun one. I know. I was going to say, I feel like I haven't seen you in forever, but I literally just saw you Monday, a few days ago. Yeah, Monday. I was going to say, I, I did just, uh, <laughs> not good off the top. Not good. <laughs> Can't talk right now. But you know what can talk? Our little fingers of the people listening who can subscribe, Ooh. they can turn that bell on, they can follow us everywhere. That's right. They can write a five-star review. You guys got this far. <laughs> Take it over the finish line. Yes. Whatever you are, be a good one and be a good Mean Girl Pod listener. Yeah, we we really appreciate everyone who does subscribe and write the reviews and comments. Like They mean so much to us. Yeah, so get on there. Um, so how have you been? I feel like last week in New York was such a chaotic week of excitement with like New York Fashion Week and then there was a Super Bowl and Valentine's Day. I feel like it was just like bum 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 of events. It was. I, I forgot even like what happened. <laughs> like I was like, what? Um the one part I'll touch on is like the Super Bowl was fun. I thought it was a great um, obviously it was a phenomenal game. I know we're going to address our post on that, but Fashion Week, you know what I realized with it? When we were at Barstool, I remember Fashion Week was in town. And I only say at Barstool to to because it's how I reference it in my brain. Um, and I remember it was Erica or someone was like, are you doing anything for Fashion Week? And I was like, no, we don't really like do anything here. And, and we weren't doing it. And I, I remember thinking, oh, I want to so bad. I would like die to be invited to a show. Like that would be a dream for me. And then you fast forward two years and it's like Alice and Olivia dressed me for a show. And I, oh, and in that moment, Wait, you walked in a show? No, but they, they dress like certain people. Oh, that's Like sick. to go to the shows. And so like you go to the fitting and you get dressed and, and Alex's fitting took three hours because she, she kept going outside to take calls with her bare feet on the New York City. Like I was outside at one point. It was with my socks on standing out there because I was like overheated and there was all these girls trying on all these clothes. But we had our call with Ian and I was like, well, so I went out there anyways. I couldn't get dressed. Um, but when I was at the fashion show... I remember thinking in order to remember how far you've come, you have to remember where you started. And where I started in New York was hoping so badly that I would be invited to a show. And then fast forward, it was like there was four. And I, I, I loved it. So when you say show, you mean like an actual fashion show of people walking? Yes. Well, so the way Alice and Olivia in particular does it is they do a set and they create these different experiences. And their models like don't walk down a runway. They're like modeling in their set. It's oh, cool. really cool. So she has like a bar in the middle and everyone walks around in a circle and every different set is a different look that's coming. And she designs the whole set around it. Wait, that's really cool. It is the coolest way. To, she does every show like that and it's like a whole experience. I didn't realize that New York Fashion Week was a bunch of shows. I thought it was a bunch of parties you would go to. So Both, yeah. I was very hesitant to attend anything because I've... A little bit of social anxiety, and I don't like to like go to things alone necessarily. But if I was invited to a show where you sit and you don't have to talk to anyone, I would totally have gone. And I go to everything mainly alone. Yeah. And one of the girls was like, why do you come alone? And I was like, well, I don't have to babysit anyone. And I I get to walk around and like I genuinely enjoy like looking at a dress on somebody, whether or not I would buy it, like it, that's fun for me. Mm -hmm. So I walk around like every single set and I take like photos and I look at it and I'm like, that's cool. And it's like, it's so special. And I, and I turned down a lot of stuff this year too, because I wanted to be like present at them. And I think you can get caught up in like going to these things of like a who's who. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not at all what matters to me. It's like more so going and like enjoying. I went to one and listened to like an opera singer sing. See, that's cool. It was like, it was really experiential and like different. And it's why I love New York. I didn't want to go to like the parties. Yeah, like I love, I have no problem going to events where there's something for you to do there. Like it could be watching something or maybe you're at like a seated dinner or <sighs> it's like a class of some sort. The thing where I have an issue with is going to these parties where you just go and you like mingle because I'm like, I don't, I don't, I can talk to a brick wall if I want to, but I'm so introverted where I get so unbelievably exhausted talking to just a couple of new people where I go home at the end of the night and I'm like, I am so tired. It's going to take me 48 hours to recover. And you don't get anything out of those moments. Yeah. You know, like you never leave and have like a coffee scheduled. Exactly. It's just a bunch of like, you probably follow three people on Instagram that you, sorry, I'm burping, <laughs> that you socially like DM 
but they're not like real connections. Yeah. They're like social. But when you go to the other, like if you go to the seated dinners, you probably make like a real friend out of it. Yeah. Like I went to a pre New York Fashion Week event where you go and you can get like different things done. Like they had microblading, they had Botox, dermaplaning, all this stuff. I went and got my eyebrows done because it was like you go. You get to mingle with the expertise, which I love doing because you get to learn. Like I was talking to all the Botox ladies and the doctor and that was so fun for me. And then when I was done with my eyebrows, I left. I was like, this was perfect. I was there for two hours. I met really cool people, but it wasn't just like sitting and making small talk. Right. And like socializing. There's like purpose behind it. Yeah. That's what I loved about our event that we had was there was the tarot card reader and there was the permanent jewelry Yup. Did you make one? No, I didn't do either. I I just I never I, when, I, when I turned around it was like over. Yeah. But it it was I love when there's events like that that have an added element to it so you're not just socializing. Well, and that was really cool too because since we were hosting it, we were able to specifically meet every single person there. Like it was a small event that we put on and I think you and I talked to everyone. Every single person that came to the door and that was really nice because we got to learn something from each of them. And it's so funny in settings like that because they're all there. It was a very purposeful networking. Mm-hmm. And so it was really, yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Oh, it was so fun. Also, um, Rob's Popcorn was one of the um, advertisers there. Can I say that Harrison owns that company? Yeah. Harrison owns that company. <laughs> I pull bag in two days. Dude, it's so good. It's like sickly good. They're hiring a marketing person right now. And I'm like, you have a great product with, and it's really cool because they can print these bags on demand and put like celebs on them. And I'm like, or they could put anything on them. Yeah. Like they could put a football game, like they could, they could pick a team and put that, you know. And I'm like, you have like this slam dunk of like viral content. So I'm like, hire a marketing person that just takes this because it's one thing if your popcorn's not good. But it's a whole other ball game when that stuff's good. Yeah, and I'm not just saying that because he's your boyfriend. Like, I mean it. Like, it's <laughs> Objectively, I was like, this is probably not going to be good. And I ate it. And I was like, oh, no, it's good. I finished it. Or I was eating it the other day. And I looked down. And there's just, like, popcorn all over the floor because I was shoving it in my mouth. It's so – but 37 calories a cup is not bad for you. I know. And then the Halo Top Gatsby oh chocolate. Gosh. I ate both bars that night I got home from the event. But, again, it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. At least you got the healthy snacks. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, that stuff, it's so good. You know me, I love I love sweet treats. Yeah. Speaking of that event, yes. should we address the clip? Yes, okay, so let's backdate to the Super Bowl mm-hmm. where Travis Kelsey ran into, the. Did, it was the coach clip, right, that went viral. And so... I post both of these, which is why I'm going to take the lead on this, because this is what Jordan and I always do. Like, there was the thing at Barstool with the employee, and Jordan's like, I posted it. I'm like, I didn't even see it. And so the Super Bowl content was probably obviously me um, yeah. between the two of us. I didn't, it was me. I didn't um, even know Travis Kelsey got in a fight with his coach until... Jordan was like, can someone explain this to me? And I'm like, you don't really even need to know. Yeah. Uh, I got it. So I, when I saw him bump into him, I... Memed it immediately because I was like, oh, that's going to go viral. Now, I'm for, and a lot of people aren't going to like this, but, like, we can't win here, so we might as well just be honest. You guys, when I say I was so excited about the sponsor, Magic Spoon, I actually replied all to the email, and I was just trying to respond to Jordan. I was like, I'm obsessed with Magic Spoon. I eat it all the time because New Year's resolutions for everyone would be cut back on sugar and add more protein to the diets. Mm-hmm. That's what you love about it. You love eating the cereal because you're like, I'm getting protein. And it tastes so good. It's because like, we, you know, we've retired from cereal because we realized it wasn't good for us. Yeah. And then insert magic spoon tastes the exact same, but it's good for you. Their chocolate flavored tastes identical to cocoa puffs. Yeah, it's cocoa flavor. Yeah, exactly. It's right. so unbelievably good. You it's and that like, oh my gosh, I put the almond milk in it and let it soak and I just drink it after. Yes. Mm-hmm. It has been uh okay, so the variety pack, the four flavors are coca, coca, cocoa. <laughs> sorry, I'm like, what? Fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. Peanut butter's my favorite. Mm, so good. Oh my gosh. Um, this pack has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and four to five grams of net carbs. Like that's un- Believable. It's only 140 calories per serving, high protein, zero sugar, keto friendly, 
gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. And you guys, I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's so good. It's unbelievable. So you guys, I know your mouths are watering because mine is. So go to magicspoon.com slash mean girl to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code mean girl at checkout to save $5 off your order. And I love this. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money. No questions asked. Whoa. I love that. Remember, start the new year off right and just like every day off right with a delicious bowl of high protein cereal at magicspoon.com slash mean girl and use code mean girl to save $5. I understand like an athlete in the heat of the moment. And a lot of times we use the saying like this is their Super Bowl. This is actually their Super Bowl. Okay, so this guy is like a professional athlete who's very good at it. And like his brother said, did he take it too far? Yes. Because we listened to the podcast episode of the Kelsey brothers disc- or breaking down why Travis did what he did. Yeah. And like, okay, that's an in the moment. Th- I mean, there are just so many worse things that can happen than this moment. Now, like him doing his thing, I knew that was go viral. I took it and the caption I put on it was, Dear boys, you don't think we get football, but we do, and this is a red flag. Uh, I don't think that's a red flag in the least. I actually call that a green flag. That's a guy that, like, like, has a passion for his craft. Um, You posted it because it was funny. That was uh, it. And I knew the comments would pop on it. Any other caption, like, it just doesn't. All right, so that's fine, and the comments pop on it. But one of the—so then the next night— we're at the party, and before the party, our to do so th- that that video was fine, mm-hmm. right? Controversial in the comments, of course, but as they should be. I woke up the next day. I'm like, why is there a football post on our TikTok <laughs> or on our Instagram? I'm like, oh yeah, the Super Bowl, it's a good old Super Bowl. I know it's just like, you know, catching them. And then the next night, we I, we went through because I was like, we should reply to one of the comments because again, as a content creator, that's what you should do. So we pick the one, we, I pick the one that says, um, Taylor Swift finally gets what she wants, which is to make a song about an abusive boyfriend. The, ki- the problem with that sentence is abusive, which is triggering to a lot of people. And for that, I apologize to those that it does trigger. Now, with that being said, Taylor Swift makes a song about every boyfriend that she's had. Uh, a lot of people were saying Travis Kelsey shouldn't have... Hit rent, like there was all this like stew about it. So that's why I clipped it and put that up there. Bad form, yes. Um, did I mean any harm? Absolutely not. As some of my friends sent it to me, and some were like, ha, ah, and some were like, wait, I love T Swift. And I was like, I love T Swift. Yeah, we both do. The, what the lens that you post that through is just like, ha, ha. Uh, yeah, that's what she does with her songs. Like, and that's that's the lens that they're looking at the Taylor through and then through at, at uh, Travis through. Mm-hmm. And so I think what people have to understand what happens at this point is so during the party, Jordan deleted it because the comments were popping off on it. And then I think to a lot of people, like one of my friends called me, was like, oh, my gosh, like there's all these comments. And I was like, no, 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 you don't get it. Jordan and I shoot. It is shots on the net. It is it is 10 baskets thrown a day. People that don't do social media for a life, shoot two to three shots a month. We shoot 10 a day. We are going to make a lot of them, and we clearly do. We're going to miss a lot of them too. Not a lot, but we're going we're gonna to have our misses. Mm-hmm. We had them at Barstool. People, I watched Kat Stickler the other day with the have to apologize for her, her video of Drake. Oh, the yeah. The sex video that leaked, and she was laughing watching it. And everyone was like, wait, that girl, though, like, that's sexual abuse. And she was like, oh, my gosh, I just posted it, like, and it's like we're humans and we don't think about it through a lens where we meant harm to anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what we do is we delete it and then you just have to move on. And it's like you can't go back. You can do this episode and say where you were coming from and absolutely apologize for it. But then from there, it's just like that's the best you can do. Yeah. And I think with us is people get so mad at us for taking things down, but we take things down and then we address it. But we only take it down so it doesn't harm anyone else or anger anyone else. We're not taking it down to hide behind the wrongs we did. Like, we take responsibility, so we talk about it on the podcast. We, like, can't be a more transparent podcast. Yeah. Like, I, it's, and, and so I just laugh sometimes when they're like, you know, we love Taylor XYZ. And it's like, so do we. Um, didn't mean anything by it. 
Definitely going to take it down if people are offended by it. Of course, don't want to mean harm. Yeah. And then, ladies and gentlemen, moving right along because, you know, uh, people take life so seriously. And it's like, you can't because no one is getting out alive anyways. Exactly. So, meant absolutely no harm. Speaking of transparency and social media. Yeah. Do you feel comfortable talking about what we discussed and what Julie and I showed you before we entered the pod room? <laughs> <laughs> Before we came inside. Uh, oh, God, sorry. Came inside. <laughs> <laughs> You're breaking the tension before a potentially very serious topic. Yeah. Um, I'm fine. You know, I'm just as fine. You know, I'll, we'll see. I but th we, I think it's our it's our duty to, we can, you said there was a lot of DMs, so it's fine. Yeah. And it's, and it's our duty in the sense that I feel like you do such a great job of always tying a lesson into it and making so many people feel okay and like they're not alone in these feelings that they maybe are feeling. Right, right. So I'll tell the story since I literally just told you like 30 minutes ago. So the other day or throughout the week on Instagram, our DMs were like starting to flood with a very consistent message about, <laughs> I'm trying to be like intense about your ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to be dramatic. <laughs> about Graham. Yes. And at first I was like, whatever, one or two DMs, like not, I'm not going to make a big deal about it. Like I'll eventually tell Alex, but it's not going to be something that's that monumental. But then it was like a ton of DMs and it was about a Reddit thread saying that Graham was on the kiss cam at an Oklahoma Thunder game. Which that Reddit thread though is now gone. Yes. Yeah, so I brought it up to Julie because she's a like an actual FBI agent and we were, we saw it and then I tried pulling up before the episode to show you and it's not there anymore. It sounds like someone from Oklahoma maybe wrote it, so maybe they took it down. Well, Julie said some of the comments, if we're gonna bring it up, I'm gonna go here a little bit. Some of the comments, maybe it seemed like it was a planted Reddit thread for maybe somebody maybe that lives in Oklahoma City. Yes. I don't know because I didn't see the Reddit threads, but that's just. Because the part that really slowing me through a loop is the kiss cam, because I remember when Alana and I went to the Oklahoma Thunder game with you. I was like, oh my God, the kiss cam. Have you and Graham ever been on the kiss cam? And you told me that you're not allowed to be if you are a Bennett and you're at a th Oklahoma Thunder game, right? Like the staff will, like they're all aware and they aren't allowed to put you on. I forgot I told you that. So I'm like, did he do it on purpose or? or is oh, <laughs> no, no. Okay. I do remember telling you that. And it wasn't like no one with the last name. He just was like, oh, we'll never be on it. They know not to put us on it. Yeah. Which is why when you said he was on the kiss cam, my first question was, I think I said, oh, he was, it wasn't a home game. And you were like, no, it was a home game. And I was like, oh, uh, you know, certainly interesting. Glad we ripped the Band-Aid off. Like, do you um, think it was like a jab at you? Let's talk about skims. Our favorites. Because normally we find bras very uncomfortable and constricting, and so in fact, we just got rid of them all together. Oh yeah. And then Q skims, Jordan tried it first. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Gave it to me for my birthday. They're literally the only undergarment products I wear on a daily basis, and when I go to LA for six hours, you best believe I'll be wearing skims, underwear, and bras, because it's the only thing I can sit in for that long. And it's so comfortable. Jordan gifted me one of the Skims bralettes, and ever since then, they've been my favorite. It is truly the only bra and underwear and robe, and now I have one of their, like, little see-through dresses that I wear with, like, jeans over it. I mean, it, every single thing they make that fits everybody material is so soft and comfortable on both of our skins, so we order it for—I actually just got it for my sister-in-law. Um, it's such a great gift to give people, because, like, you're not going to dislike it, and everyone needs those types of products. And— they really do, and you know that it's going to be like a slam dunk. Because it, yeah. it's typically, for you to give me like a bra and underwear, it's like, am I going to like it? And you were like, I just love it. Well, I got it because you told me, you're like, I'll, I'll never wear underwear ever. And I was like, just you wait and see. Yeah, you will wear this. <laughs> so you guys are going to want to get in on the action and shop skims and bras at skims.com, now available in 62 sizes. So there really is a size for everybody. 30A through 46H, plus get free shipping on orders over $75. And if you haven't yet, be sure to let them know that we sent you after you place your order. Select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. 
seriously, if you guys go shop, do give us the credit. It's very important that they do that. Yeah, I didn't. This is why we prep topics. I didn't have any time <laughs> to think about this. Um, because sometimes when you overthink, the topics become bad. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, I would imagine not. Like, okay, I would like to think. Of of course not. Did he ask to be on the kiss cam? Like, I would hope not. Oh my mm-hmm. god. Um, and not oh my god for my sake. Just like we're not asking to be on kiss cams. And then. As as far as like the Reddit thread being planted, I have no idea. Yeah, probably not. Maybe I the way some of the things that Julie had said did sound like they knew a lot of things. But here's my thing: I have to laugh if people are like planting re- like, oh That's my crazy, oh my god, <laughs> like for what? Because the whole thing is, you just hope everybody ends up happy. And you don't throw jabs at people. Like, that's what I hope. Yeah. And so I would assume that's not happening, right? Do you still feel like you have the responsibility to, like, protect him or what you guys had, your marriage? Do you ever feel like you can't fully talk about it? Well, I, I, I try not to talk about it. And I guess I don't know why that is. Why do I try not to talk about it? Like, it's hard. Like, most people don't have to. But when you have a job where you talk for a living and you've, sh- you've shared your most vulnerable parts of your life, and then it starts to go into our DMs, and I'm assuming your DMs eventually in our comments, it's like you you have to talk about it. Yeah. I didn't give any kiss cam. I You know what? I did put up a story today where I was like, ask questions. And I got a couple that said kiss cam question mark. But I also get ones that are like beat picks question marks. So like uh. I didn't think a thing. I was like, what is going on with the kiss cam? You know? Yeah. Um, I didn't think a thing of it. I didn't have any clue about the kiss cam. Um, because like, why would you tell me? Right. Or not like you. You would you would tell me because our DMs get flooded with it, which that's weird with the Reddit thing too. Like, why what my my number one question here is why do people want me to know? Exactly. Like, who's putting it on Reddit for me to know? That to me is like odd. Who's trying to get me some message? I'm great. Thank you. Um, so that like doesn't make any sense to me. Like whatever. Uh, but the reason I don't talk about it is I don't know. Um, like do you feel like that you've moved on fully? Like do you ever think about like what he's up to? Like does, as this. You know, like, does he have a girlfriend? Like, has he moved on? Well, I did get, when I was on the ski lift in Whistler, I got a text from a very dear friend of mine who I love, and she said, do you have any update on Graham? And I was like, nope, but I guarantee you do, because, like, that's an odd text, you know? And I love her, and I knew she would tell me, and she said, okay, there was an Instagram uh, selfie of him and a girl. I said, okay, send it to me. Like, that's no, I've posted Harrison. Like, that is no big deal. And she sent it to me. And I said, that boy looks so happy. And I actually don't even know if he's got an, in- I don't know who posted. I don't know if he's got an Instagram or he must have an Instagram because this girl doesn't live in Oklahoma City. So there's no way that she would know, like know her Instagram. Um, But then I got it sent to me like, you know, 12 other times. And my friends were like, you know, I just want to let you know. And I'm like, I love you all for letting me know. Thank you. But my takeaway is he looks so happy in that picture. And I want him to look so happy. And I know, and I was sitting with Harrison on the ski lift. And I was like, get over here and sit by me. And I was like, okay, here's this photo. Because it's this really raw moment where I, I knew the day would come. Well, actually, you know what? Do you know the one thing Graham said to me whenever he left? Well, he said a lot. I say that all the time. The one thing he said in this like a whole, you know, like paragraph because it can't be one. He did say, um, I'm going to die alone and I'm never going to date anybody else. Oh. And I remember it hit me like a freight train because I thought, you're so awesome. Like you and I aren't right for each other, but like you're going to make somebody so happy. I got lucky in November getting set up with Harrison. Like sometimes I still think I I didn't deserve that. Um, on Graham's birthday, I was walking with Harrison. I started crying and he was like, what's wrong? And I was like, it's Graham's birthday. 
And every year I made him a funfetti cake. And while I'm not his girl, I want everybody to be loved. And like, I just hope somebody's making him that funfetti cake. Yeah. And Harrison was like, as you should hope that. And I, and I hope it too, you know, for anybody. Um, and when I saw that picture, I looked at his face and I thought, that boy's happy. And that girl don't know her. And let me tell you what, being from Oklahoma City, happier than shit that I don't know her. <laughs> um, j- just because I didn't want it to be like a friend. You know, I just didn't want to be like, Cal, and my friend, you know, I'm all for go do your thing. That that would have been like, oh my gosh. Um, you don't need to know who your ex is dating. Yeah, it's like, I don't need to, you know, and I just thought, he looks so happy, and I hope she made him that funfetti cake. And was it sooner than I thought he would move on? Don't know, didn't think about it. But maybe me, maybe me posting Harrison gave him that permission to move on. But the goal is, and I told my friends this when they sent it to me, because it feels, sometimes it can feel a little dramatic. Like, oh, did you see X, Y, Z? And it's like, yeah. Did you guys also see mine? Like, we're both allowed to have that because the goal here is that we both end up happy. Yeah. And like, I look happy in my photos and he looks happy in his photos. Oh, yeah. And if we're, and if that's, and if we didn't, we didn't go through what we went through to end up miserable, we went through it to be happy. And so when I saw that, I was like, I was Thrilled sounds weird, but I felt a really, like, warm feeling. Yeah, when your ex moves on, it's a very strange feeling because it doesn't. sometimes it doesn't matter if you were the person who broke up with them or the person who got broken up with. You can still feel sadness or relief or thrilled or you could be totally fine and then just start crying if you see them with a new girl. Totally. And I told Harrison and the, the first one that sent it to me, I said, oh, my heart's skipping beats. Of course it is. Yeah. Like, we're human. You know, I was married to him for four years. So you're like, okay. And then you're like, hell yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like you. we hope that the person who put that on the Reddit thread, it's like they're trying to be vindictive and try to hurt you. Because he probably has no idea when you just want the best for him. Exactly. I'm, And I'm like... People can take shots at me all day long about it and let me know all that's going on. But it's like, guys, at the end of the day, like, I'm really happy. And Mm -hmm. it looks like he's really happy, too. And I'm not going to enter a happiness competition with the guy. I'm not going to even look that direction. Um, And my friends know now. I need no, uh, like, no photos, no nothing. I just wish well that way. And that's, like, all I can do. I I think a lot of people on the outside have a lot more fun with it. Than, than you do. Yeah, that little Twitter finger from Oklahoma had a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, and I, you know what? I bet I got their contact in my phone <laughs> if I had to guess. Probably um, hung out with them before. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, and it's just like, ladies and gentlemen, it's not a, like, we, worry about yourself. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. So let's pause to talk about something that Mean Girl Pod, Jordan, and I are so passionate about, which is when everything in life you feel like is going good, or bad, playing offense, not defense, and going to therapy and really putting your mental health as a priority. Oh, yeah. Therapy is the, one of the only things that has been consistent in my life for the past, like, five years. Ever been trying to fall asleep at night and your thoughts are just racing and it's like you want to untangle that with somebody? Knowing mm-hmm. that you have a therapist is crucial because I know Jordan and I both have talked about this a lot, but we feel like at times our brain is getting in our own way. We know what we should do. We know what's good for us, but it's like you just can't do it. Having a therapist helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. So we have both benefited, I would say, entirely. Oh, yeah. Since we met each other. Oh, yeah. From therapy, and we could not recommend it enough. So if you guys are thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try because it's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, which is huge. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch at any time for no additional charge. They really do make it friendly. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Mean Girl today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Mean Girl. Do you think that there's a timeline of, or like a certain like rule book of 
when you should let your friend know about their ex? Like, do you think it was okay that your friends sent you pictures or do you think it was okay that we told you about the Reddit thread? In this regard, yes, because you're who I want to hear it from. Mm -hmm. You're right. Like if the wrong DM gets to me, I would be like, uh, did you know? And you're like, okay, yeah. Yeah. And and while from now on, I don't want to know, unless like, and he would never, but if he's taking some shot at me somewhere, I would probably like to know, um, which is just not going to happen. But I think the first photo and the first, I'm still so confused about this kiss cam. Like, I really don't, I, that that to me is is baffling in the sense of like, what happened with the kiss? How did you get on? The, like, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, it's so funny because I spent so long like, Knowing I wasn't going to be on the, it's just hilarious. Um, she was a little well planned out. <laughs> Jordan's over here. That's all I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> this sounds like something I would do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jordan's, like, Jordan's like, and the reason I can identify it with it is because <laughs> legally it usually is not okay. <laughs> yeah, Jordan's like, I just remember. Um, but I want to know from like you guys, yeah. round one. It would be weird if I was like, send me everything. Like, who's the girl? Like, guys, no. Yeah. Just give me a little heads up and then moving right along. I know. I don't know how I feel about it. Like, when I broke up with my boyfriend of five years, I got, like, kind of annoyed at my friends for sending me stuff. Because I'm like, guys, I broke up with him. Like, I don't <laughs> want to know. But then I wanted to. But then, like, my friend was like, he's engaged. He's getting married. And I was like, okay, that stuff is kind of okay to tell me. Did but, you care? Um, I it was a, a curiosity thing. Well, I was a little annoyed because like we broke up, and apparently like I broke his heart, but then he found someone new in a year, got married. Like <laughs> he's living his best life. Right? I seem to go for five years of worked on myself. <laughs> Everyone's past different, but I was the bad guy for breaking up with him. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> but like then I remember when I was younger and like my heart ripped out. If, of my chest in high school I was like I never want to know anything that my ex has done or moved on with right yeah I feel like there's this spot like if you don't want to know anything at all it's like okay then you probably can't handle it yeah right if you want to know so much well then you're not over it mm -hmm. like I feel like there's this very fine line and we've both had to go through it yeah because I remember was that did I, was I like with you when you're your ex posted something. Oh, that was when we were in Oklahoma with the guy I was seeing. And he like posted with a girl. Something happened. Yeah. I can't, yeah. Yeah. And and I remember thinking like, oh, I don't have this perspective on these exes and things. Yeah. Because it made you feel, it made you feel some type of way. I was just like angry. Yeah. And also a little sad. Right. Sad. I feel like the, the first big milestone of everything is fine. Like the first time your ex post with a new girl when he gets engaged when he gets married like the big moments but like you don't need to show like the little ones like I don't need to see their Valentine's Day post or or their them kissing that's where it gets weird to me yeah like or people are bored yeah like if I'm sitting here saying like let's find her what's her name okay yo weird yes just just the awareness as a human being and acknowledging at one point you loved this person I think it's okay to be like a little heads up. It's just like, thank you for that. We let's all be adults here moving right along. Yeah, like it's, I've been the person being broken up with and I've been the person who breaks up and it's not fun no matter what situation you're in to see your ex move on. doesn't matter how far along you are in the situation, how moved on you are. If you're with someone else, it's just like a weird foreign feeling seeing a person you spent so much of your life with with another human. Totally. So it's like, fine, show the first picture, but then like let your friend protect their peace and just live in delusion and be oblivious to what their ex is doing. <laughs> no question, because they they don't, what good, it doesn't do anybody any good. Yeah. To see it. Like after this, the only other thing I ever want to know about grandma is like, if he gets married again. Totally. I'm, I'm my own curiosity. Yeah, and I hope he does if he wants to. Like, whatever's right for him and makes him happy, that's what I wish. Yeah. You know, and I assume you wish it for all of your exes. And I hope they wish it back for me. Oh, yeah. I was so, I mean, yes, it was a little sad when I saw my ex get engaged and get married. But I was actually very happy, too, because I was like, he's living the life that he wants for himself. And he's so happy. Yeah. And it's like, that's not your guy. Not my guy at all.
and and you kind of look at it through that lens of like why I was like why is my heart skipping a beat and it's yeah. like oh you're just shocked like I just remember that face you know and then it's like okay it's just it's like okay this is natural you're human it's all yeah. you're curious and it's okay to feel like even if you were confused or like your heart skipped a beat or you were sad seeing Graham move on or anyone like that's a normal human being feeling be weird if you had no emotion towards it. Would it would be weird if I like, was like, you good? Don't show me. Like, I felt nothing. It's like, you know, and then I thought about whenever I posted Harrison, like, his <clears throat> heart probably skipped a beat and he probably just stood there and stared at his phone because, like, I wore a wedding dress by that guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that, that's not for nothing. And you don't expect yourself. I think him and I both would be like, I never saw this coming. So it's just, yeah, it's, I, we've talked about this before on the podcast, but a breakup is an ambiguous loss. Like you lost a person who's still alive and you still have to process that and grieve it like you would a death. Yes. So you had to grieve the loss of Graham, even though it was like a healthy, good decision for both you guys, but he's not going to be in your life anymore. And like you just being a human being still needs to understand and like, like, your brain needs to figure out that this person I spent five years with, I'm no longer going to see, talk to. Like, it's weird seeing them with another person. Like, you still have to grieve that. Yeah, and your brain has to, like, catch up to today. Yeah. Which is, you're right, it's so hard because you can't just say, okay, moving on. You know, like, okay, pivot now. It's like, well, no, because it's it's like, um, it's the imagery is in your head. Like, yeah. what is that called? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But also, too, like, being a human, it takes... A specific amount of time for you to just adapt to a new way of life. Like a rewiring. Yeah, you have to almost. rewire your brain. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I think the only thing that can do that is time. And I think both can be true at the same time of like we're both so happy. But those those moments can. And, I, and if I was single or if he was single, we could still, of course, be happy. Yeah. Like I don't think it takes both of us moving on to, to define us by the words of happy. I think that that's achievable lots of different ways. But it still, you see the photo and you're like, oh, blinking, right? You're mm -hmm. like, what's happening? I know we're not really an advice podcast, but do you have any tips for people <laughs> to, move or move it, to, move, to move on in a healthy way from their ex or like ways to cope with seeing their ex move on? The only thing I can really say after this past year is come, come from a place of like, I thought a lot about what's the big picture here mm -hmm. and, like, what's the end goal? And if the end goal is really for both of us to end up happy, and we knew five years. If we stayed together, we kept saying five years from now, if we have kids, if we have a family, if we move to Oklahoma, we hate each other. Okay, well, that's not the goal. So the goal is that Alex and Graham end up happy, right? Okay, in between that, it's not being petty. It's not taking shots at each other. It's not wishing the other one fails, you know, or doesn't date somebody, you know, anything like that. And so I think if you go through the breakup and just realize if you're standing by the wrong person, you don't find the right person. Yeah. And you don't stay with the wrong person out of fear that they go find another person. You have to say, I'm going to put myself first and I want to be really happy. And that that's going to look like X, Y, Z. And then you go and you do it. And and when you see them with another person. This was really easy for me, um, and I think, I think you genuinely know this, but like, I think a really catty way to handle it is like start texting it to your friends. Yeah, and be like, "Did you see this? Like, she X Y Z," and it's just like, "No, no, 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 no." Like, I really hope they're happy because you should really hope everyone just ends up happy. Yeah. Otherwise, it like makes you sick. And I think too, like, you need to protect your peace and know that if you need to block that person, block them. Like, you control what you see. If you need to mute them, if you need to block their friends, like don't think that you're being some people are like, oh, that's so juvenile or catty that I have to block them. It's like, no, you're protecting your peace. Like unfollow them. Like my feed, I don't even I'm like even with little things like fitness influencers, I can't follow fitness influencers because I have to protect my peace with there my you, mental health. There you go. It's good to know that. And it's like keep yourself busy. Spend a lot of time with your friends mm -hmm. and just know that. At the end of the day, like, what you said is so good. Like, you really want your exes to be happy. Why the heck did you break up with them otherwise? Yeah. I mean, you, you, could, you could hate them. Like, you, you guys could fight all the time and, like, need to break up, right? That's fine. 
But like in in our instances, it's like you you're optimizing for happiness. Yeah, I think too setting boundaries with your friends and family. Like I had to tell my mom to like stop telling me about my ex. <gasps> she because she loved him. She'd be like, blah 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 blah, and I was like, mom, he has moved on. I don't want to be with him. Let's stop talking about him. Yeah. And she finally did. But like my friends who I eventually had been like, you guys just like not tell me that or show me pictures of him and his new girlfriend because I don't care. Right. More. You know, one th- w- that's a really good point is setting boundaries with your friends and family. And, you know, one thing that he kind of told me uh, before our live show was I think some of his friends were like, they, they just had something to, they had some things to say that weren't very nice. And he was telling me. And I was like, well, what do you say back to those things? And he was like, mm. And I was like, In- like, interesting that you would let your friends kind of like shit talk the situation. Um, cause, cause mine know not to. Yeah. Let's talk about apostrophe because this month is all about giving your loved ones some TLC, but guess who really needs it? Jordan. Jordan <laughs> and Alex and our skin. Yes. Because what's worse? Like what shakes your confidence more than not having good skin? Nothing. Like I really struggle with rosacea and I actually used apostrophe last week. I was laying in bed and I was like, I don't have time to go to the dermatologist. I need to fix my skin because you and I were recording we're going to LA and I was like what can I do that's so fast so I went on apostrophe I used our promo code mean girl Heck yeah and I got prescribed topical and or- oral I would say oracle <laughs> oral treatment for my rosacea and it literally was the easiest process ever I didn't have to like walk anywhere I didn't have to sit in an office and wait and then they give you the list of everything that applies to what it could like do for you and then you get to pick what you buy so no one's like forcing you to buy all these prescriptions that's unbelievable it was a very easy seamless process and then it came in like five days are you kidding no I'm I'm dead serious wow okay that's incredible so I'm sure you're gathering apostrophe is an online platform that connects you with an expert dermatology team to get customized treatment for your skin which is what Jordan did and now look at my skin and now and and Your skin's always been phenomenal. It's LA ready. That's right. Through apostrophe, you can get access to oral and topical medications that use clinically proven ingredients to help clear acne or rosacea, as we just heard. Simply fill out an online consultation about your skin goals and medical history. Snap a few selfies and a dermatology provider will create a customized treatment plan for you. That is so easy. We have a special deal for our audience. Get your first visit for only $5 at apostrophe.com slash mean girl when you use code mean girl. That's a savings of $15. The code is only available to our listeners. To get started, go to apostrophe.com slash mean girl, then click get started, then use our code mean girl at the sign up, and you'll get your first visit for only $5. Thank you, Apostrophe, for sponsoring this episode and Jordan's skin. Thank you. My boundaries are in place that, like, we're wishing him well. If you see him, you get your butt over there and, like, you say hi. Um, and, like, that's just how like, we're going to handle it. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that that boundaries thing is... There are there were times back in the day where I wanted to break that boundary and just be like, can I call you like that? And it's like, no, because why would we spend that energy hating on this situation? Like, that's not going to change anything. Yeah. And when you get in those texts and you're just sending these catty messages, it's like you're just shit. Talk- like they're just shit talking the situation and it makes it worse. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it puts hate out into the world. And don't be that friend who continuously sends your friends updates of their ex. No, like I I had friends like that in college and I literally was like, you have to stop. I don't care or want to see it anymore or post-college. I mean, when we broke up, I think it's a really hard text to send, like to be the one to tell them. I can't imagine overdoing that. No. Being like fire in the hole. Here's another one. It's just like, and I think, but that, that's my whole point with it is like, I think a lot of people are having a lot more fun with it than, than we were. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Some, you know what I mean? Some people just love to like sit in other people's misery. Misery well, loves company. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. And they're the miserable ones. It's like, we're out here enjoy- like we're out here just like living life. And it's, and listen, it's not lost on me that you and I are public. Mm-hmm. So I understand, of course, the life I live can get forwarded around. No problem because I wouldn't change the life we live for the world. And yeah, I think we have a lot of peace with it. But to like have fun, just being like forward this, like, and it's just like, yo, Get a day job. Literally. (laughs) Like, who's got the time? And start asking your friends, like, do you want to know before you send it? Because they they really... I think you can get caught up into it, though. Yeah. I think if you start to allow it, 
this show me the info on the ex or even when even when girls can ostracize a friend Mm -hmm. it's like send me everything about her and it's like why that's taking up space in your brain also it's just gonna hurt you long term it can't feel good no read an article on yahoo it'll it'll teach you more that's like i remember when we worked at barstool there were things where i would be like i don't want to know it's better that i don't know like it's fine if i'm delusional but like don't tell me what that comment said like it's better that i don't know yes because your day is the exact same like that comment exists if we read it to you that's gonna suck a little bit if you don't read it no problem like the less we know is better (laughs) yeah and like people are gonna have all these opinions on our lives and it's just like that is they actually have nothing to do with us exactly they're just their opinions they're not ours yes so i'm glad that you're doing okay you're doing okay right I couldn't be doing better. Okay, good. I think the kiss cam thing is a riot. Like I, <laughs> I that one to me is hilarious. Um, but no, he seemed so happy in the photo. Good, and I was happy to be with Harrison in that moment, and just be like, get over here and sit by me. When I showed him <laughs> the photo, though, he goes, "What are we looking at?" And I was like, "Oh my god, that's Graham!" And he was like, "Oh my god, didn't know what the guy looked like." He's in a healthy place. Yeah, yes, like, there he is. And he was like, well, of course the day would come. And he was like, this is so fascinating. Like, do you know her? And I was like, I don't know her. That shows that you're in like a he- healthy, stable relationship. Totally. And I just, yeah, I really couldn't think about it less, but I could not be happier for him. And I'm glad that you talked about it because I know it wasn't a fun conversation, especially in the beginning, but like the listeners will be so appreciative of it. And I think it's just something that we... Not necessarily, owing is not the right word, but like something that we want to give our listeners, like that little sneak peek of our life that they see and they want answers to. Yeah, and I I really agree with you. Like, I'm glad you brought it up because I wasn't sure Mm -hmm. um, because we didn't have really enough time to decide. I, I don't know. I lived it, right? And I don't know why I don't talk about it so often. Because to me now, I guess this is why it doesn't have so much to do with him. It's more just like my lessons that I take away from it. Um, this one had to do with him, but it, it, heck, I think you know, twenty thousand people fit in the arena. That you know, it's on. It was for randomly everywhere. Um, so yeah, happy to address that. Perfect. Um, should we do a listener question? Yes, let's do one. Lighten up the mood a little bit. Not that that was that. <laughs> right. Really wasn't that serious. <laughs> I'm gonna read it because it's well, it's a story from my friend. That's why. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So. The like there, so there was a listener question that literally was like it was from a guy and he said what's the proper etiquette when asking for a girl's number but I have a story to go into that okay so so I was getting brunch with my friend last week and she told me the story about a guy asking for a number and I was like my jaw was on the floor I couldn't believe what I was hearing so she was at a coffee shop and you know in New York how coffee shop the tables are very close together so it was her and our my other friend they were sitting across the like a two-seater working from a coffee shop right next door to their table was a guy also working and he was like sitting so like very close and my friend and my other friend were just chatting about like the dating life in New York City like this and that blah blah blah. having like intimate conversation like you do with your friends right and in the middle of the conversation the guy turns over and is like oh so I see you're talking about NYC dating life and like tries to get into the conversation, like isn't getting the hints that they both one don't want to talk to him because one he's a stranger and two they're like trying to work from the coffee shop. And then he then proceeds to ask my friend if he can take her on a date because he hears that she's not having a great experience with it and asks for her number. Oh my gosh. And then doesn't do it when leaving. He does it in like the middle and then she has to sit next to him for I think another hour. She didn't, I don't think she gave him her number. I can't remember. I think she might've been like, no, no, she did give him her number. Cause she was like, I don't know what to do. You almost have to. Yeah. It's like she was ambushed. Yes. So then I was like, that is not proper etiquette. Proper etiquette would be to ask while he is leaving. So if she wants to say no, she can. And it's not awkward. And she doesn't feel ambushed or uncomfortable. And it has to be, you're right. It has to be the smoothest interaction in the world to leaving like you know her other guys aren't treating you right like I would take you on a great date here's my number I don't think you ask her for her number I think you have yours written on a little piece of paper here's my number text me if you'd like to also when they were sitting down when he asked her on a date 
He was like, what are you doing Friday? She's like, I'm getting dinner with my friends, which she was. And he was like, well, can't you cancel on them? Okay. I, she was very nice to stay sitting there. Yeah. She was like, no, I can't because I made the plans. And he goes, I don't understand why you can't. What? Yeah. There's no court awareness there. No social awareness. No social awareness. What? No. Like, uh uh-uh. Etiquette for asking for a girl's number in a public place is when one of you are leaving the building. No question. Do not make it to where you have to sit there. But if you're sitting in a bar, even like you have to be leaving. It's so awkward. Or at the gym. Never ask during the workout. Ask while they are walking out or you're walking out. I can't believe this guy. I was shocked. I was I thought when she first told me the story, he asked for a number and then like he was texting her, like, Can I take you out? Like blow your friends up. She's like, No. He was saying to this to me in real life. Next to my other friend. I mean, and this guy doesn't understand, like, there's just like your chances are going down, down, down. And I think it's safe to say being a girl, we do love we don't mind if guys come up to us and ask for a number, but we mind if guys, um, what's the word? Loiter? Suffocate. Yeah. Yeah. Like linger. Yes. It's like ask. And even if we say yes, walk away. Right. Don't linger. Or yeah, and even just like you can't make girls feel any kind of pressure if you're asking them for their number. Yes. Because then I think that makes it a little awkward. But if you're just sly of like, would love to take you out, and then don't, you could say, would love to take you out, pause, gauge her reaction, because that's where she could say, I have a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And then you know not to ask for her number, or she could be like, that'd be fun. And then you could be like, oh, cue the sign, ask for the number. But don't be like, hi, can I have your number? It's like, whoa, want to like start with my name? Remember the pickup line we always said, like go up to someone and ask if they're single or taken? Yes. It also gives them the easy way out. Because if they really don't want your number, they can just like, I'm taken and then you're done. I think you know in the first five seconds if somebody's single or taken based off their body language. Somebody can be polite but closed off at the same time, probably taken. Yeah. Or they don't want to chat. But if they're kind of flirty back to you, it's like, yo, go in for it. Yeah. You got a shot. And like, maybe go up alone. Like, don't bomb- like don't go up in like a group. Totally. That happened to me one time. Someone came up to me with his friends and he was like, can I have your number? And I was like, I didn't know what to do. So I just gave him a wrong number. Yeah. Like, I don't want to. Oh, my gosh. One time. Okay. I was in Vegas and this was not that long ago. Somebody asked me for my phone number and it was so awkward because I was in the elevator and I, we, in the elevator. I just passed away. Right. And he was like shampoo effect drunk. It was like 8 a.m. And I was going down for the rodeo. Right. So he just had started drinking again or maybe hadn't gone to bed yet. But I'm like fresh and just got ready. And he's like, yo, can I have your number? And I was like, no, like one, I got a boyfriend too. like I'm here for work. And he's like, where do you live? And I said, New York. He said, I live in New York too, Upper East Side. Like, let me get your number. And I was just like, so I gave him a wrong number. And then he called it right there in the elevator. And he was like, is your phone ringing? And I was like, no. Like, you suck for checking. How disrespectful. Oh, I was like, the audacity. Also, if someone says they have a boyfriend or girlfriend, leave them alone. And he was like, how long you been dating? And I was just like, just... Take the signs that we don't want to give you the number. Please re- and please respect people's, just respect people. J- just like, yeah, just like to call the number and check is crazy. Also, if a girl says no the first time, she means no. I just ain't it. Like, just walk away. You'll know if a girl wants to give you your number. She'll just give it to you. She'll be like, oh my God, uh, yes. Text yourself. Like, I don't Literally know. Literally use my phone. Take it. Yeah, like, <laughs> you'll, you'll know. It's just like, there's not up for debate. Yeah, so I would say the etiquette is... Make sure that one of you is leaving the building and politely ask if they're single or taken and read the room and walk away then. Read the room. She's in the elevator. Oh, it was terrible. I know. And, you know, it's just like floor, floor, floor. And you're like, oh, when's it going to end? I get anxious if someone talks to me in an elevator. Oh, my gosh. I can I imagine know. if someone's like, what's your number? I was just like, only in Vegas, right? Oh, my God. And the past was just like, he was drunk. And I was like, it's all good. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, oh, uh, after this, we're going to be in L.A. Oh, yes, can't wait. We have a lot planned. We're super excited. 
We're going to make some fun content. We're going to record with some cool guests, have a fun solo episode. Yeah, we're going to have both the Brits on, Violet Benson. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we're super excited. So make sure to DM us if you guys have any questions for Brittany Furlan Lee, Brittany Schmidt, or Violet Benson. Or if you have anything that you want Alex to show me because she's kind of an L.A. native now and I'm not. We're going to be in Venice. We're going to do Abbott Kenny. We're going to eat all the good restaurants. It's going to be a blast. You're going to love it. Yes. Um... Okay, See you next love week. you guys. Loved you guys. Okay, that's it for today's episode. As always, thank you for listening to Mean Girl Pod, powered by Just Media House. I'm Alex Bennett. And I'm Jordan Woodruff. So, AB, do what you do best. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, rate, and review. We are at Mean Girl Pod on all platforms. Stay connected with us on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Snapchat at Mean Girl Pod podcast and social artwork and post-production by Creative Evolution Studios. Theme song to the Mean Girl Pod performed by Sergi Asbel. Mean Girl Pod, where your besties in your ear. New episodes every Monday.